stuff, so I guess I didn't win. Unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, and don't mind the banging. You know, it is a nice breezy day, the doors are flapping. Not exactly, you know. But it is what it is. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, Tom over there, I know he's on our network. Is everybody else new to Fusion Wires X stuff? Pretty much? Okay. Um, what our network is? Next. I'll see you We are on a high link network. Now, the misconception is because it says Ohio, doesn't mean you have to be in Ohio to be part of the network or on the network, digitally speaking. Um, what it is, it's a link of repeaters throughout Ohio. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of the aspect as far as the usage for wires X and repeaters and such. But we have roughly about 22 repeaters in the network, and then they have what's called YSF, um, which is the AC System Fusion Reflector that you can use for hotspots. I did not bring my, okay, bring my laptop back. Anyway, I was going to bring a hotspot. Is everybody familiar with hotspots are? Have you seen them? Okay. Um, basically, if you're in an area where you're not going to get to a repeater, um, it's a little like a 5.3, 5.4 interface, or a shark R up the spot. This is a MiFi. Oh, so, well, that's a data. That's not a hotspot. Right. But, okay. Um, but anyway, you can get into networks for uh, just this network or any of them with a hotspot. But that allows you to get into digital networks that are linked together, various from Fusion to DMR and all that stuff, uh, with these hotspots. But, so back on to the repeaters. Um, is everybody familiar with Wires X, the concept of? Now, let me put this as Wires X, not C4FM. C4FM is the mode of Fusion. Wires X is actually the interface for repeaters, for the repeaters to be able to link. It connects the repeaters to which you can slide it. Change slide. It should be. And this is what one of the fusion repeaters looks like. This is the newest one, DR2X. Um, if you're in part of a club or something like that that has a repeater that they say that's fusion, this is probably what's going to look like. Um, they do have some older ones that are called the DR1X. That is only one, one side, not two. However, the misconception on the 2X is you think there's two repeaters in there. That's actually one repeater with a controller. So it takes away like analog repeaters to get a controller to be able to manipulate and all that stuff. In this case, you're able to do everything in one unit. You don't have to buy a separate, separate unit. Um, so that's, that's as far as the, the unit itself. The wires X, uh, next slide. This is the Wires X box. It's also known as the HRI 200. You'll probably hear that. This is what you have to have to connect to that repeater to be connected. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are getting into fusion repeaters, possibly, but they're mostly in analog. But if they have a wires or if they have a fusion repeater, all you need is to get this and your and it plugs into the repeater, and you can be online and interconnected. Um, But that is a big, big misconception. People are like, oh, yeah, it's a wires X repeater, but it's not connected, so it's not actually wires X because it doesn't have it. The well, wires X is for the interface for repeaters or nodes. That's another attribute you can do. You can create your own node at your house, which would also be a repeater, which would, in part, entail one of these and a mobile radio in your computer, and you would be able to create your own repeater at home. Um, but there's also another mode that's called uh, direct or PDN mode, where you can just basically have your laptop and plug in a radio. And then with the right firmware and stuff like that, you'll be able to just use another HT to get to that radio, and that would be your repeater and such. Which is also uh, a digital mode. Um, now in the modes, when you're when you're working with repeater fusion repeaters, you'll see on um, if you're familiar with radio, and I, I did bring one. This is the FT70. Um, if you're familiar with the FT60 in analog, that's like one of the mainstays of Yazoo's 
computer, or radio, HTY. This is the next version that has incorporates the digital into it. It's basic, but it does work very well. It's just a stout as the 60 is. Um, however, it does not have the GPS capability. You can't control wires X with the HT. But is this interface only for C4 and then repeaters, or can it be used with other stuff too? No, it is only for C4. Um, that is proprietary to Yezu. Now, with with the usage, and there's another step to that. I'll kind of step on. Um, no problem. I work, I, work, I work better actually with interaction. So. But um, with the FT70, it doesn't have it. You know, you probably heard of FT3. Now has an FT5, which is the same vision. That's all the full color display, the bells and whistles. You can control wires X with those radio. Um, now, what wires X allows you to do is like our thing. Sorry, I'm trying to remember what the next slide was. But um, it's your uh, website and Facebook. Okay, don't worry about that. Um, what wires X allows you to do is currently, it's like for our network, which is Ohio Link, if you go into a repeater, um, you know, it's, it's capable for wires X. You can get into it and manipulate it. Now, the caveat about the manipulation for the repeaters is if you take that repeater from the home network that it's in, be it like the high link or whatever network it's in, you are taking that whole repeater out of the network that it's in. So anybody that's listening on that frequency will travel with you to whatever room you change that to. And some people are like, oh, I didn't know that, because it will. And they're like sitting there listening to somebody talking on high link, next thing you know that they're listening to something in Texas. I'm like, what just happened? Um, so when, you're, when it's in a network, we, you know, for our network, that is purposes, we do ask if you want to change it to a room, you kind of announce out, hey, I want to change the room. And you'll hear that a lot on our network, that they'll say, hey, I want to change, take the, this repeater. Because when you're talking on a repeater, you don't know who you're talking to. You could be talking, you know, like we can get into Finley here, and I'd be talking to somebody down in Columbus, and it's vice versa. Um, we also have locations outside the state, Indianapolis, um, West Virginia, Kentucky, Michigan. All those are incorporated, so you have to be mindful when you're working with wires X and all this other stuff that there are many people listening. Um, not everybody's talking, but there's a lot of people listening. And there are some people that might get upset because they take the repeater. It is what it is. You're not going to lose everybody. Um, was there any questions, Herbert? So the use case for this device on screen is that you install this in your home and connects that kind of connection to your local internet in your house, whatever. Um, yeah, well the box itself, that's for wires X. If you want to do what's called a node, a wires X node, you would need a laptop and that box on the back of it, which I did again for I can't really pull it out of. Uh, on the back of it have two connections and one plugs into your radio and one plugs into your computer. And what that does is basically what this does is this turns all your RF audio traffic from the radio, converts it to a communication that the laptop and internet will understand. And then it'll send it to wherever it's going, to the repeater or net, whatever network you're getting into. So yeah, you can create it that way. Um, it's only been, what's it only been on? Two years, a year that the Yezu um, had created the PDN version where they did the upgrade yeah, for the uh, firmware. It's two, two years. Okay. It's about two years that they did the firmware upgrade where you can do uh, an FT2, FT3, now FT5, and HT. Or if you have an FT100, and if you have 100 volt on that, it's your life is one of the best readers out there. And it's just continued. Uh, FTM400 or 300 and then 400. Those radios have the firmware that you can just plug it into your computer without this, and it turns it into a node just like it would in this regard. So, I mean, it's a good thing. I'm not saying that. I mean, it, it leave, I don't want to say that it cut them off their sales for wires act, but it made it more palatable for the public to be able to be able to interface with all this. That box is like hundred something dollars on its own, so having a radio that can go. Yeah. Now the only caveat to that is you also have to dedicate a radio 
to that. Now, if you go into direct mode, what direct mode does is it changes the radio that, like, we were talking with that. You could have radio to your laptop and all that stuff. And you would use another HD to communicate with that radio. But direct mode would actually change. It changes the mode to where you can actually use, specifically a lot of people do it with mobiles. If you have a mobile hooked into your personal node, you can actually use that radio to talk directly into the computer as opposed to communicating with an HD to another radio. But yet again, you're still dedicating a radio for that. But, you know, in perspective, you know, this is this is their cheap one, or not cheap one, but their basic entry HD, it's like 100 and, what is it now, 120, 130, give or take. Yeah. Um, but this one you can't use as in your node interface. You can use it to get into whatever, but you can't dedicate that type of thing. Uh, so, so the mobile I'm sorry? The mobile, uh, some of the models you were describing, yeah. It's mobile, uh, well, like this, like this one here, this is, this is a 7250. Yeah, this is a dual band. I don't know if everybody can see that. It basically looks like a lot of the commercial. This is actually based off the Vertex standard platform that they had. Um, it also looks like uh, the Kenwood 4770. It's all the front firing speakers and stuff. Anyway, it's dual band, single line. This one won't interface with wires X or as a dedicated it either. It does not have the firmware. They do not have the firmware for it, unfortunately. Uh, they've also discontinued this one too. There's some real the discontinuation. They have. I don't know if they're getting rid of glasses with a whole other barrage of new stuff or not. But, uh, but I think a lot of it had to do with because they. The 7250 is probably the biggest number. They had good batches and bad batches. And if you got a, a batch, and what I mean is there would be, we had one user that had, you ever say in the shower trying to talk to someone? That's what exactly what it sounded like. Every time you key up, it sounded like you're standing, there's a waterfall standing right behind you. We call it the shower radio. Um, but there was a bad batch of those 7250s that every time you keyed up in the talk, they sounded like they're right in front of a waterfall. And they've got so many of those set back, it's unreal. But, uh, so a little more on hotspots, which is another thing that people, if you have this, does everybody have a fusion radio of some sort, or is it, are you all just DMR, or? Show of hands, who has DMR? All right, ladies and gentlemen, and radio operators, we have our 1030 drawing. Ticket number 0837, 0837, Heidi Briel of Rochester Hills, Michigan. You're the winner of our $100 cash drawing. I think I heard her screaming out there on the flea market. She's happy. Heidi, <laughs> Rochester Hills, Michigan, ticket number 0837. Uh, don't forget about that crash course that we have here in about 30 minutes. The uh, ham radio crash course is going to be over there in the agriculture building. That is from 11 to uh, 12 noon. And that's with Josh Nash, Nass, N-A-S-S, ham radio crash course. That's at 11. Thank you for coming to the 79th Finley. Yeah, fast. Enjoy your day. I'm sorry. I won't have any repeaters. He's timed out. I don't know. <laughs> I was getting ready to say something like, uh, anyway, so everybody's got DM, DMR familiar with DMR. Now, you know you can get on the Fusion Network with those DMR radios, believe it or not. That's where the hotspot also comes in. The hotspot, most hotspots, all the open spot three, that's another conversation. Um, you can do what's called transcoding. You can go into a hotspot with a DMR radio and come out on a fusion network. And vice versa. If you have a fusion radio, you can go into the DMR network. So that's another plus for the hotspot side of it. Is it the Pi Star basically? Hot yeah, Pi Star or OpenSpot, the Shark Art of OpenSpot. Now, the, the only reason 
like the OpenSpot 3, and the only reason I say that, the OpenSpot 3 is the only hotspot, I believe it's the only one, um, I don't know if high stars do it, because I don't play with D star, but I know commercially the OpenSpot 3 is the only one that can transcode into Fusion and DMR with an HT. And, and D star. They actually have, OpenSpot 3 has all of the uh, book coders. Right. They do. Now, I've heard so, there's a lot of problems, though. Yeah, it's, it's not good. stable. Yeah, it's really not stable very much. No, I mean, but it's the same reason. <laughs> but in the world of computer and digital age, it's supposed to be perfect, right? Yeah, if it all went well, we would be instant. Do what? Bridgecom is actually a high star, uh, but they, they do all the packaging and programming and, and build it. And then they've got, you know, uh, duels. So right. Yeah, I don't myself because everything, as far as your high link network is concerned, everything is all fusion repeaters. Um, on one side, and then they have what's called the YSO, which is Asian distribution reflector, and that reflector is for all the hotspot interfaces and stuff like that. Um, that, because it consumes so much, and that's what I deal with the most, I don't deal with these sort of things. Sorry. Uh, now, as far as simplicity for those that want to get into Fusion that are not, are there, is anybody here that's never got on a Fusion repeater? Really? Okay. Um, the simplicity of fusion is that it's simpler than analog. I don't think you'd ever hear that, but it is more simple than analog. Because all you have to do is grab your radio, put in the frequency, and hit the digital, and you're on the network. You're in it. You don't have to do any code plugs. You don't have to plug in the computer. None of that. It's all straight, straight away. It works fine. Um, that's a big selling point because I know that there are plenty of folks who are you know, only in the analog and they're like, oh man, that digital stuff is going to be so confusing. So it can be. Um, but the entry, which is fusion, is why we kind of delved into that aspect of it. Because once some folks that have only been in analog start getting to digital and if they go into the entry version of fusion, you know, then they kind of get accustomed a little bit how digital works, and then they might delve into the DMR, which is a little bit more complicated. And, well, that other one, um, which actually there's even way more than that. I mean, you talk about the big three, which is Fusion, DSR, and DMR, but there's also Next Gen now coming around. Uh, P225, yeah, that was the next one. And there's some networks like uh, that you can get into, which is America Link. Sorry, I mean to America Link. Um, that. It's just magic. They have so many connections. They're so busy, it's hard to really carry much on because they have all those apparatuses all in one network. So you're clashing with an analog bridge over. I think they also have um, Echolink. Echolink too. And it, that's yeah, it's, a, it's a cocktail party. It, it is. Uh, and that's the problem. <laughs> and I, I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak ill of America Link in the digital realm or the repeater realm or whatever you want to call it. But when you create something that has that massive amount and you don't have any structure to it, like our repeaters are core repeaters, mind you. And if, which I will advance over real quick just to go to that. Nope, wrong direction. There we go. Um, we have two things. We have the highlight. This is YSF. This is for Facebook, as you can tell. If you go on the Facebook, that gives all the updated information for anything deal with Ohio, like repeaters and all this other stuff. Now, however, our list is always changing as far as repeaters because we have four repeaters, and this is our website. This website, and believe it or not, it's not digital, a new domain. That's kind of a new cool thing. Um, all our updated information about the repeaters and locations and frequencies and all that stuff is on the website because, like I said, we're changing so much. It's hard to keep up, keep you know multiple lists going in both apparatuses. So we just direct everybody that goes on the Facebook to go to the website. Um, and those that haven't been, I know some have. Uh, we are at table 130 over in the Legacy Building. We do have uh, cards that you can get and flyers you can come and get. That way you have all the information. Um, our flyers that we have are kind of they are a little bit older, but you know when you make a pack of something, it almost hits the flyer. So it, it gives you the entry level information to get. Doing on time, by the way. 
Does anybody have any other questions about anything? I feel better about the questions. Real quick, because uh, I can't help but jump in. Um, the other thing, so Jay actually got me started in Fusion in general. Uh, so a uh, Christmas Day, I usually get on and I go through every technology I have. And somebody got something new and they want to play with it, right? So I have had an FT2D forever. And I'm like, yeah, Fusion seems great, but I only use it on a hot spot. It's not, not doing anything. And I caught him on a local repeater, and then that was it. I, I was like, ah. so I did DSTAR, uh, which is great for the GPS stuff. I did uh, DMR. I'm a computer guy, communication engineer, so building code plug and all that kind of stuff. That was great. I pretty much am 100% Fusion, uh, because like you said, I'll be in, I travel a lot, so I'll be in Kansas City. And I'll get on somebody else's repeater. It's not part of Ohio Link and it's not permalink. You know, it doesn't have a default chain on Ohio Link. But I can get on the wires X from my FT3 and choose Ohio Link. It's usually one of the top three or four uh, traffic on there. And I'm back on that. So I'm on Ohio Link all the time because it's, you know, black guys. And no matter what. Uh, really quick, just in. in in the overall synopsis, is everybody from Ohio? That would be the person. Everybody from no. the Ohio region? You're not. Michigan. Michigan, that's right. I talked well, about. we did, uh, you had a link for a while with. Uh, we did, do, and I think I mentioned to him, we did a trial thing, yeah. um, which was created between us and, another, and the Michigan group. TGIF Detroit. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, we were able to connect two rooms, two wires X, Yezu rooms. Um, that it took a lot of work to get that stable, so it wouldn't crash and have problems. Speaking of crashing, that reminds me. You had a question real quick, Oh yeah. Um, is it when you say checking into the network? Are you lighting up the whole state at one time, or are you just checking into? Well, the lighting up anybody being a node or a repeater, and the repeaters that Jay's talking about are their default is if nobody has changed anything like that is Ohio. Right now, I can be in Kansas City and say. Hey, does anybody use this repeater, QRZ? Yep. And then I access it and I say, and I put it up on Ohio Link, courtesy on that too, by the way, is when you're done, drop it, yep. go ahead and put it back, leave it like a pen. But uh, uh, so at that point in Kansas City, uh, those folks on that repeater are all in the Ohio end. No, what I'm saying is on the Ohio end, are you lighting up every. Yes, when you turn up, it's like Finley, Finley right now, when we get yeah. this up, when yeah. it started, it turned it into our state. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so you kind of answered some of the questions when you talked about a little bit, but, but to understand in Ohio, as I travel around and I select a different repeater and the different yeah, when you're traveling, which is what I, I just switch enough. to that repeater and right. it's connected. I don't have to do anything else for the most part. Now, it's only here's the thing with the network in that regard uh, for the basis of Ohio. Uh, the ones that are listed have signed up to be proprietary with Ohio like, as a basis. Now, the thing about that is there's also, like, how do I put that? We have 22 listed. We might have upwards of 40 repeaters connected at one time. But those are collaborations or people that just drop in on a day basis. They're like, oh, you know, there's nothing going on on the network that we're in. Let's see what's going but on. But these others, if I'm traveling and I pick them, yep. I'm connected. I don't do anything. For the, as connected. long as, now here's the other thing is, um, when you, if you go onto the website and the list of the repeaters, you'll see a little arrow and there's a category that says locked. What that means is it's locked in Ohio. You can't change it. It won't leave it because that's a proprietor here now. A lot of people get upset about that. We've had that. A lot of people say, oh, well, I want to change and explore stuff. We had it. When we first started putting these repeaters up, we had them open. People could change them. The problem is, is one, it's abuse. People are changing the repeater into, you know, for instance, American Link. And the reason why I pick on American Link, because they are so busy. The only way you can change in and out of the, the rooms is if there's no traffic. You change it over to a room, you can talk. But there has to be uh, at least three minutes and no traffic. I think it's two or three minutes and no traffic for you to physically take that repeater out and put it back. Now, a 15 minutes mark is if it's 15 minutes, of no activity, they have what's called a return to room, and that's based on wires X, where 
the owner, now yet again, let me go back to the thing. The ones that say lock are all pretty much either lock or they're proprietary owned by us, by Ohio. But there's a lot of repeaters that are collaboration. Uh, one of our biggest growing attributes is we keep communicating such as Finley. Um, you know, they have multiple repeaters. One of them, you know, the UHF was sitting, no traffic, dead. You know, they want to say, hey, how can we get a little now? By them allowing us to be a proprietary connection, that kind of gives them a little notoriety because they're listed on our list. That also lets you know that, for instance, I think you're the one I was talking to, you can go from Cincinnati to Toledo and carry an entire conversation. Now, mind you, you do have to change the frequency to the area repeater, but you can go from Cincinnati to Toledo and still stay in the same number. Given that the repeater or node gateway that you're on is in the network. And that's why we kind of try to push for the Ohio link, the folks that are in there, to stay part of it. Now, if they're not on the list, but they're a Wires X, you know, they come and go, and we can't guarantee that they're going to be in there. So, so with the Wires X, like you say, go Kansas City Connect, if you're on a repeater then in that Wires X, that, this network will always, the Ohio link will always be in that Wires X list. Yep. You'll find it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so when anyone, you like FT2 or FT3 or now 5, and you say search, and yep. it comes up with the most, the ones that have the most traffic. America Link will be up there. Uh, Texas, Al Nexus. Alabama Link, Texas, Ohio. We're, we're, in, in, we're like the top six. Yeah, we're there. in those top players. So, so it's usually pretty easy to find to get on Ohio Link. Uh, and then, like I said, the, the purchase thing needs to drop. When we go. So then if I go to a hotspot and connect, which is internet connected, and I'm connecting to that hotspot. Right. And I'm going to see that in my hotspot list. To yep. Connect yep. To. And the convenient thing, which I don't have on, I don't have a slide for. Um, our number is 405 by 7. We actually had to do special work to get our YSF, which is hotspot, to match up with the same number as our wire. Sandwich board just crashed. But um, we had to do extra work because. Um, I don't even remember the number. It's been so long that we changed the number. But the wires X and the YSF were two different numbers. So you would have to remember two different numbers to get in those. Now we've fixed it to where it's all 405 by 7 to get in the network via hotspot or uh, or uh, wireless numbers. Yeah. Um, Is there an echo link connection into this? We did have an echo link, and the usage so died that we just took it off. Um, now, however, which Good thing you said something because it did remind me of that. There's a new Fandangle thing out there. It's called Droid Star. Anybody familiar with it other than Tom? So Droid Star is an app you can get for your phone to get onto a DMR. Is it DMR Fusion only or all three? Um, I think it even does uh, D Star at this point in time, but I'm not sure the legality of that because they found them in their, their book owner and all that. Well, they're not proprietary anymore because Chenwin had a freaking D Star too. They're made for it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, Droid Star. Um, you just you, you basically put it in, and Ohio Link is. However, you have to have a DMR ID number. Yes. You have yes. to have a DMR ID number to use Droid Star, and that registers you in all your information. So when you key up, and that's the thing about Fusion as well. Oh, that was that was something else to bring up. Um, when you're talking and, you, and you're on the radio, and the ones that have Fusion may know this. When you get into the digital realm, there's three modes. Technically, more than that, but did, uh, voice wide, which is BW, DN, digital narrow, which are the two primaries. Um, the way that works, and, and the reason I'm putting this out there, because when you're starting to talk about digital connecting, especially in our network, some other ones may not, but in our network, you have to be in digital narrow for everybody to hear you. If you're not digital narrow and you go into voice wide, all the people that have personal digital nodes set up in your house or direct mode won't hear you. Um, and the reason for that is because if you're familiar with the, the number of digital or voice wide and digital narrow, voice wide when you're speaking is full 25K. Um, if you're in voice wide, you're using that whole spectrum. Digital narrow splits it. Voice is 12.5, your data is 12.5. In a lot of places, like the digital, uh, the direct mode and the PM modes, have to have that digital, that digital information for it to work. So you might sit there and you'll hear a one-way conversation. You sit there talking, somebody's talking, and you're like, 
can't hear the other guy. That's because your voice what? The other caveat is uh, uh, on uh, Droid Star, well, uh, folks that do DMR are already used to it, and yeah. Fusion less, I think it's uh, less of a delay, something like that. But by the time you get all the way through a couple of hops and you're on Droid Star, uh, I give it a solid two Mississippis uh, <laughs> that somebody else's carrier drops. Man, I key solid two Mississippi before I <coughs> transmit because and it seems to work flawless. Yeah. Uh, if you fast key on these and, and also like you said, you were in Kansas City and you up that repeater, you don't know what their connection is like or how many hops they've got or anything like that. So, but pretty much if I get two Mississippis, I don't know. Yeah. One of the big issues we also have per se is a lot of people have these PDN nodes and all this other stuff, and then they're like, have a neighbor three doors down that becomes a ham or finally gets into digital or whatever that is. In those nodes and gateways, if you trigger or if you key up on those, you will trigger the other person that's on your node faster than the network will keep up. So basically the quick key, which you were discussing, is you know you don't want to quick key because you have all these bridges and stuff to have to key up, and I know sometimes it's a little slower. Um, the other issue is audio. Your God. Um, DMR audio as compared to with Fusion audio, you only need a level a level two to a level three on your mic gain compared to a five on DMR or seven to nine in analog. Like you use it in analog and simplex and stuff like that, and then you go on a fusion, you're gonna blast everybody out of the water. Because the audio is so much hotter. It takes less audio to work across. Okay, we just have our uh, 1045 drawing, and this is for a I did see you a second. ARRL gift certificate. This goes to ticket number zero two three two. Very point zero two three two. Yeah, uh, so and the, for I said that we have this in. I see no that I said that yeah. George from Toledo, yeah. and you're the winner of our 1045 drawing. drawing. Something. Uh, keep in mind that we still have that little clock more on the ham radio crash course. That's with Josh Nass. And uh, that will be up there. And then no, no, I used to climb trees. I'm not going to jump up there. I think that's all we were supposed to announce. Uh, please uh, see that vendor over there, the food vendor. Uh, they're not just barbecue. They've got a white truck over there with a window. They've got you got cold drinks, obviously barbecue. You have a little bit of uh, Thank them for being here today to help us out. And thanks to all our members who have uh, donated door prizes. And thank you to all of you for attending the 79th Finley Camp Fest. All right, cool. That was like the real reaction. You had a question. Yeah, uh, my memory is about like that long. So your website, does it have a lot of uh, information about it? Because I want to learn more about it. About, um, well, I, as far as what specifics about wireless and all that stuff, yeah. Um, yeah. we are actually in the process of recreating a new website. So it is kind of preliminary. Um, all our basic information from repeater, uh, repeater location, stuff like that. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more in depth about uh, the YSF side. Now, mind you, our network has two sides. It has the wires X, which is the repeater side, the YSF is the other one. You can physically go to our website, click the wires X icon. It'll take you to what's called our YSF dashboard. And what that dashboard will show you is all the activity that's going on. It'll show you the last uh, radios that transmitted, all their you know, call sign, how long they were on there. You can see last heard, all time heard, all the specifics about that if you really want to delve into that. Um, I am currently working on adding a lot more interactive. Uh, this be one of them. Um, this whole thing is going to be, uh, is being recorded. It will be on our website. Um, they're recording the, the thing for their club website. To get their <laughs> club thing. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm starting to get more interactive. Um, I'm going to start posting a lot of, uh, Links to like YouTube, pertinent YouTube users that have like posted stuff specifically about hotspots. Or okay, I was just looking at it from the aspect I've done nothing on the digital side mm -hmm. to just get to get started with that. And the good thing is about that for Fusion, this this is the easiest entry level. Uh, the other thing about digital, which is the biggest thing, is you either have it or you don't. 
You're not going to, you, it may break a little bit. We call it digitizing, per se. But you either have it or you don't. It's not like analog where you can stretch and all this other stuff. But um, for those that are around Ohio in multiple areas, if you don't have a repeater in your area um, and you want to like you're, you want to get more into the network type stuff, maybe talk to your clubs or your, your people that own these repeaters. Um, another addition about the network itself and all this, the, the, uh, the usage. These repeaters that are not our proprietary owned ones, which are we own personally, um, so we're getting ready to put an eighth repeater system that we own. Um, we own those. The rest of them are all collaboration. Now with all these collaborations, how they work, whether they change rooms, whether they come back, all this other stuff, that's all the repeater owned. We don't dictate to them. You know, we're thankful to have them as part of the network to be in the repeater realm, if you will, of our, our network. We're appreciative of that. We're, we're not going to tell them, hey, no, you've got to be on this. You can't change room. You, you know, all this other stuff. We're not going to do that. We don't want to do that. You know, if you do have a location that's interest, if you go to our, our website, which is down here. Speaking of which, you can actually go to our table. We're selling shirts. I can get shirts, sweatshirts. Uh, we have window decals. We have all the information about the website or about the Ohio League Network at booth 30, 130. Look for the big orange strobing lights. We're the ones that are loud and noxious but quiet. Um, but yeah, the only thing, if you, like I said, if you're interested, you go on our website, there is a contact form there. And that contact form you fill up comes to me. And what we do is we work with clubs to try to, you know, maybe help people that are interested. And there's a lot of them. I mean, Evan can attest, um, theirs were standalone dead. I don't know how much traffic they've been getting now that they're part of the network a little bit. It ebbs and flows. It seems like some days I'll hop on there and there's seven or eight people just in the yep. life, and other days it won't get touched for a week. So people are still working for But it's three. more traffic than it was before, or was it not? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so if you know of locations, you know, contact me and say, hey, our club's interested, or, you know, I want to put, even if you want, if you're, I don't even say if you're near a major city, but if you're in a city and you have a 30 foot tire next to your house and you want to say, hey, I would love to be on, you know, this type of thing to do as a gateway, and we call those gateways, which are, they're not repeaters. If you're a gateway, you're like using a hotspot. The thing is, is like one of our major, major ones, which is, um, we call it like Hamilton, Hamilton Township, just north of Cincinnati. It's a personal, personal gateway. He has it on a 40 foot tower on his house. It's physically, you know, just a radio computer and that HRI 200. That thing has a 45 mile circumference. He has people that comes in from Indiana, Kentucky, uh, almost to Dayton. That's just on a personal note. That's not a high, I mean, he does not agree that he has a high level. I think he's at 950 ground level. So 40 foot up. So, I mean, but if you want to be part of, you know, the network and be able. Now, the other addition to the highlight, and we're talking about out of state, we're actually out of country. I can tell you probably four, four regular calls that come in. Two of them are from Japan. One's from South Korea. I've talked to you three times this week. Europe, Australia. So they're like, oh, it's not proprietary in the States. We have connections that come from all over the world. So, I mean, it. it I guess Israel, but that was a cheat. It was me. Okay. What? Israel, but that was a cheat. It was me. Yeah, you would. <laughs> but, you know, it takes a little bit from here and there. You know, obviously you're going to take, hopefully take a little bit from this here and maybe explore further from it. Um, but I think, uh, like I said, if you want to stop over, you want to maybe learn a little more detail, stop over at the booth at 1.30. Um, look for the orange thing. Uh, now, as far as if you're interested in shirts and stuff like that, we have gray ones and black ones. Um, that are available to sell. I am taking orders for any other ones that you want. So if you're interested in that, as soon as I get an order together, I'll ship them to you. You just have to pay a front form. Um, any other questions? That's not well, I thank you all for coming, and uh, I guess that is my time because we got set up for the uh, internet thing. So thanks thank so much for coming out, Jay. Thank you.